Hello, and welcome back to Storytime with Eric Zimmer. Where we last left off on the Twits, Mugglewump and his family were preparing to put make the Twits stand upside down. They went into their house when the Twits were out with buckets of sticky glue. Ha ha ha, I can only imagine what's going to happen next, or how they're going to do it. And we'll find out what happens in the last seven chapters. You ready? Alright, let's begin. Chapter 23. The Great Glue Painting Begins. This is the living room, announced Mugglewump. The grand and glorious living room where those two fearful, frumptuous Freaks eat bird pie every week for supper. Please don't mention bird pie again, said the roly-poly bird. It gives me the shutters. We mustn't waste time, cried Mugglewump. Hurry up, hurry up. Now the first thing is this. I want everyone to paint sticky glue all over the ceiling. Cover it all, smeared in every corner. Over the ceiling, they cried. Why the ceiling? Never mind why, shouted Mugglewump. Just do as you're told and don't argue. But how do we get up there, they asked. We can't reach. <clears throat> Monkeys can reach anywhere, shouted Mugglewump. He was in a frenzy of excitement now, waving his paintbrush in his bucket and leaping about all over the room. Come on, come on. Jump on the table. Stand on the chairs. Hop on each other's shoulders. Rolly pull. He can do it flying. Don't stand there gaping. We have to hurry. Don't you understand that those terrible twits will be back any moment, and this time they'll have guns. Get on with it, for heaven's sakes. Get on with it. So the great pa glue painting of the ceiling began. All the other birds who had been sitting on the roof flew in to help, carrying paintbrushes in their claws and beaks. There were buzzards, wild ducks, woodpeckers, magpies, rooks, ravens, and many more. Everyone was splashing away like mad. And with so many helpers, the job was soon finished. <laughs> Chapter 24 The carpet goes on to the ceiling. Uh -huh. What now, they all said, looking at Mugglewump. Aha, cried Mugglewump. Now for the fun. Now for the greatest upside-down trick of all time. Are you ready? We're ready, said the monkeys. We're ready, said the birds. Pull out the carpets, shouted Mugglewump. Put this huge carpet out from under the furniture and stick it onto the ceiling. Onto the ceiling, cried one of the small monkeys. But that's impossible, Dad. I'll stick you onto the ceiling if you don't shut up, snapped Mugglewump. Oh, <laughs> oh, you will not. He's dotty, they cried. He's balmy, he's batty, he's nutty, he's screwy, he's wacky, cried the roly-poly bird. Poor old Muggles has gone off his wump at last. Oh, do stop shouting such rubbish and give me a hand, said Mugglewump, catching hold of one corner of the carpet. Pull, you nitwits! Pull! The carpet was enormous. It covered the entire floor from wall to wall. It had a red and gold pattern on it. It is not easy to pull an enormous carpet off the floor when the room is full of tables and chairs. Paul yelled Mugglewump. Paul, Paul, Paul. He was like a demon hopping around the room and telling everyone what to do. But you couldn't blame him. After months and months of standing on his head with his family, he couldn't wait for the time when the terrible twits would be doing the same thing. At least that's what he hoped. With the monkeys and the birds all pulling and puffing, the carpet was dragged off the floor and finally hoisted up onto the ceiling. And there it stuck. All at once, the whole ceiling of the living room was carpeted with red and gold. <sighs> Chapter 25. The furniture goes up. Now the table... The big table, shouted Mugglewump. Turn the table upside down and put a dollop of sticky glue onto the bottom of each leg. 
Then we shall stick that onto the ceiling as well. Hoisting the huge table upside down onto the ceiling was not an easy job. But they managed it in the end. Would stay there, they cried. Is the glue strong enough to hold it up? It's the strongest glue in the world, Mugglewump replied. It's the special bird-catching, bird-killing glue for smearing on trees. Please, said the roly-poly bird, I have asked you before not to mention that subject. How would you feel if it was monkey pie they made every Wednesday and all your friends had been boiled up and I went on talking about it? I do beg your pardon, said Mugwump. I'm so excited I hardly know what I'm saying. Now the chairs. Do the same with the chairs. All the chairs must be stuck upside down to the ceiling. And in their right places. Oh, do hurry up, everybody. Any moment now, those two filthy freaks are going to come rushing in with their guns. The monkeys, with the birds helping them, put glue on the bottom of each chair leg and hoisted them up to the ceiling. Now the smaller table, shouted Mugglewump, and the big sofa and the sideboard, and the lamps, and all the tiny little things, the ashtrays, the ornaments, and that beastly plastic gnome on the sideboard. Everything, absolutely everything, must be stuck to the ceiling. It was terribly hard work. It was especially difficult to stick everything onto the ceiling in exactly its right place. But they got it done in the end. What now, is the roly-poly bird? He was out of breath and so tired he could hardly flap his wings. Now the pictures, cried Mugglewump. Turn all the pictures upside down. And will one of you birds please fly out onto the road and watch to see when those frumptious freaks are coming back? I'll go, said the roly-poly bird. I'll sit on the telephone wires and keep guard. It'll give me a rest. Chapter 26. The Ravens Swoop Over They had only just finished the job when the roly-poly bird came swooping in, screaming, They're coming back! They're coming back! Quickly, the birds flew back onto the roof of the house. The monkeys rushed into their cage and stood upside down, one on top of the other. Uh. A moment later, Mr. and Mrs. Twit came marching into the garden each carrying a fearsome-looking gun. I'm glad to see those monkeys are still upside down, said Mr. Twit. They're too stupid to do anything else, said Mrs. Twit. Hey, look at all those cheeky birds still up there on the roof. Let's go inside and load our lovely new guns, and then it'll be bang, 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 and bird pie for supper. Just as Mr. and Mrs. Twit were about to enter the house, two black ravens swooped over low over their heads. Each bird carried a paintbrush on its claw, and each paintbrush was smeared with sticky glue. As the ravens whizzed over, they brushed a sweep of sticky glue onto the tops of Mr. and Mrs. Twit's head. They did it with the lightest touch, but even so, the Twits both felt it. <laughs> What was that? cried Mrs. Twit. Some beastly bird has dropped his dirty droppings on my head. On mine too, shouted Mr. Twit. I felt it, I felt it. Don't touch it, cried Mrs. Twit. You'll get it all over your hands. Come inside and we'll wash it off at the sink. Those filthy, dirty brutes, yelled Mr. Twit. I'll bet they did it on purpose. Just wait till I've loaded up my gun. Mrs. Twit got the key from under the doormat, where Mugglewump had carefully replaced it and into the house they went. Chapter 27 The Twits are turned upside down. What's this? gasped Mr. Twit as they entered the living room. What's happened? screamed Mrs. Twit. They stood in the middle of the room, looking up. All the furniture, the big table, the chairs, the sofa, the lamps, the little side tables, the cabinet with bottles of beer in it, the ornaments, the electric heater, the carpet, everything was stuck upside down to the ceiling. The pictures were upside down on the walls, and the floor they were standing on was absolutely bare. What's more, 
it had been painted white to look like the ceiling. Uh. Look! screamed Mrs. Twit. That's the floor! The floor's up there! This is the ceiling! We are standing on the ceiling! We're upside down! gasped Mr. Twit. We must be upside down. We are standing on the ceiling, looking down at the floor. Oh, help! screamed Mrs. Twit. Help! 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 I'm beginning to feel giddy! So am I! So am I! cried Mr. Twit. I don't like this one little bit. We're upside down and all the blood's going to my head, screamed Mrs. Twit. If we don't do something quickly, I shall die. I know I will. I've got it, cried Mr. Twit. I know what we'll do. We'll stand on our heads. Then, anyway, we'll be the right way up. So they did on their heads. And, of course, the moment the tops of their heads touched the floor, the sticky glue that the ravens had brushed on a few moments before did its job. They were stuck. They were pinned down, cemented, glued, fixed to the floorboards. <laughs> They're about to meet their demise. Through a crack in the door, the monkeys watched. They jumped right out of their cage the moment the twits had gone inside the house. And the roly-poly bird watched, and all the other birds flew in and out to catch a glimpse of this extraordinary sight. Chapter 28 The Monkey's Escape That evening, Mugglewump and his family went up to the big wood on top of the hill, and in the tallest tree of all, they built a marvelous treehouse. All the birds, especially the big ones, the crows, and the rooks and magpies, made their nests around the tree house so that nobody could see it from the ground. You can't stay up here forever, you know, the roly-poly bird said. Why not? asked Mugglewump. It's a lovely place. Just you wait till the winter comes, the roly-poly said. The roly-poly the roly -poly bird said. Monkeys don't like cold weather, do they? They most certainly don't cried Mugglewump, and the win are the winters so very cold over here? It's all snow and ice, said the roly-poly bird. Sometimes it's so cold, a bird will wake up in the morning with his feet frozen to the bow that he's been roosting on. Then what shall we do, cried Mugglewump? My family will all be deep-freezed. No, they won't, said the roly-poly bird, because when the first leaves start falling from the trees in autumn, you can all fly home to Africa with me. Don't be ridiculous, Mugglewump said. Monkeys can't fly. You can sit on my back, said the roly-poly bird. Mm -hmm. I shall take you one at a time. You will travel by the roly-poly superjet, and it won't cost you a penny. <laughs> and finally, chapter 29. The twits get the shrinks. Oh, ho, ho, ho. They're about to meet their demise. <laughs> and down there in the horrid house, Mr. and Mrs. Twit are still stuck upside down to the floor of the living room. It's all your fault, yelled Mr. Twit, thrashing his legs in the air. You're the one, you ugly old cow, who went hopping around shouting, We're upside down, we're upside down. And you're the one who said to stand on our heads so we'd be the right way up, you whiskery old warthog, screamed Mrs. Twit. Now we'll never get free. We're stuck here forever. You may be stuck here forever, said Mr. Twit, but not me. I'm going to get away. Mr. Twit wriggled and squirmed, and he squiggled and wormed, and he twisted and turned, and he chuckled and churned. But the sticky glue held him to the floor just as tightly as it once held the poor birds in the big dead tree. He was still as upside down as ever, standing on his head. But heads are not made to be stood upon. If you stand on your head for a very long time, a horrid thing happens, and this is where Mr. Twit got his biggest shock of all. With so much weight on it from up above, his head began to get squashed into his body. Quite soon it, it had disappeared completely, sunk out of shot sight in the fatty folds of his flabby neck. I'm shrinking, burbled Mr. Twit. So am I, cried Mrs. Twit. Help me! Save me! Call a doctor! yelled Mr. Twit. I'm getting the dreaded shrinks! 
so he was. Mrs. Twit was getting the dreaded shrinks too. Ho 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 ho. And this time it wasn't a fake. It was the real thing. Their heads shrank into their necks. Then their necks began shrinking into their bodies. And their bodies began shrinking into their necks. And their leg... Into their legs. And their legs began shrinking into their feet. And one week later, on a nice sunny afternoon, a man called Fred came round to read the gas meter. <laughs> when nobody answered the door... Fred peeped into the house, and there he saw, on the floor of the living room, oh God, two bundles of old clothes, two pairs of shoes, and a walking stick. There is nothing more left in this world of Mr. and Mrs. Twit. And everyone, including Fred, shouted, Hooray! The End Thank you for listening. Have a good night.